environmental issues, global warming, energy sustainability, climate change. Infrastructure, anything from transportation to air traffic to electricity. Education is a complex system. I think there's no more important problem in the U.S. today. The issue now seems to be more complex, more intertwined. There's a need for academic researchers that are really tackling big questions and um, these big questions often don't fit squarely within disciplinary boundaries. It requires a new, more holistic way of thinking. It requires new methods and tools uh, to really think about these systems in a bigger way. The Engineering System Division at MIT was put together in order to expand the definition of engineering. ESD is very interested in tackling very large, complex, and very difficult problems. So that may involve looking into economics of a problem, engineering options, engineering design, politics, and really bringing all of these perspectives together. Traditional engineering can be expected to address part of the problem, but the solution cannot be, or is not, based on technology alone. We really look at the whole picture and look at not only the technical content, which has to be good, but also the social and cultural factors. We decided that ESD should focus on four domains. Uh, the first domain we call critical infrastructures, which is primarily the transportation and the information system. The second domain is uh, energy and sustainability, and those are, those are tightly coupled. The third domain we call extended enterprises, and this is the whole world of distributed product development, global manufacturing, and supply chains. Essentially how goods and services that we use in our daily lives, how are they produced, how are they distributed. And then the fourth and newest area is, is healthcare, healthcare as a system. My research is focused on the energy box, and the energy box is essentially an energy management system uh, focused on individual homes that would help control appliances and storage devices, which could include plug-in electric vehicles, in response to what we expect to happen on the grid, which is time-varying pricing of electricity to some degree, and also to weather-dependent sources of electricity, which could include wind turbines and solar panels. Ultimately, we want to look at the grid as a whole. What happens when you put thousands or hundreds of thousands of energy boxes into homes across the grid? In engineering systems, we're trying to put together the principles of how these large, complex systems involving both technology and society operates, how they can be changed, how they can be improved. Some of these issues are very hardcore engineering science. Many of them are not. What are we going to do with the baby boom as, as they are retiring? The solution has a healthy measure of technology and engineering science. At the same time, it involves people and institutions. Consider this. One baby boomer turns 64, one every seven seconds in the United States. In Europe, there are already more walkers and wheelchairs than there are baby carriages. And in China, by mid-century, there will be more people over 65 than the entire population of the United States. At the Age Lab, we bring together the future of how you'll live tomorrow, new visions of what business will be doing, and how government will support those people. One of the things we're most proud of is how we've been able to turn inventions in the laboratory into innovations in the living room. So for instance, for a major car company, we help redesign some of the interfaces of their car to make it not just easier to use, but safer to operate on the roads today. We've actually done work on developing services about end-of-life planning and envisioning the future of the financial services industry. So the Age Lab is a research education platform, but we're very proud of the fact that we've impacted government policy and business. The Center for Transportation and Logistics, which is part of ESD, has a vision of creating a global set of centers that will educate students, 
for being global leaders in logistics and at the same time do research on a global scale with researchers all over the world working very closely with each other beyond the traditional academic cooperation model. To this end, CTL started a center eight years ago in Zaragoza, Spain. Two years ago, they started a center in Colombia and they are in negotiation to start a center in Southeast Asia. I can say proudly that eight years after the start of the Zaragoza program, it's the leading program in supply chain management in Europe. I absolutely feel that my time at ESD has really helped me grow as a researcher. Being able to work with uh, other researchers, faculty and students who are uh, more experienced in the social science and the qualitative side of things has really helped me sort of expand my perspective. I think really studying uh, the nature of systems and the way you architect them and the way they behave, I think it really does profoundly change the way you think about the physical world you're in, the way businesses are run, the way products are developed. EST is uh, 12 years old and it has grown significantly since its founding in 1998. The number of credit units taken by MIT students and EST subjects has grown by a factor of four and it's been quite an exciting uh, evolution. I've always been interested in problems that are of importance to society and as scientists it's important for us to provide information to the public, to policymakers, so that they can make informed choices. You can't really understand the natural systems without understanding the human systems and that really drove me to think about a systems approach. I view this as being critical for, for the future of engineering, for the future of MIT, and also really for the future of the man-made world that, that we live in.